welcome to the Brookfield Board of Selectmen's meeting for Tuesday, April 24th, 2018. Will you please uh, rise and join me in saluting the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like to entertain a motion to approve an expense warrant and refunds for 4818 for $1,297.62. So we do them together? Yeah, we're going to do them together. And now to approve a correction, <coughs> excuse me, from 12-19-17 warrant for 4-10-18 for $530 and approve an expense warrant for 42418 for $24,311.15. We have a motion for that effect. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> I'd like to approve this, an, uh, a motion to approve the selectmen minutes for 3-2018 and 4-2-18. You have a motion to that effect. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Acknowledgement and minutes and reports of other departments, the rec commission for 3118 and 31618. Move that we accept the uh, report from the rec committee. The reports okay. from the rec committee. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we have an announcement. Uh, congratulations to our system assessor, Al Jones, who was recently awarded a $500 scholarship from the Worcester County Assessors Association to attend an appraising course in Marlboro in June. So we want to congratulate Al for that. And uh, does anybody else have anything for announcements this evening? No? Announcement wise. I'm sorry? No, no, no I don't know. No, okay. No public access. All right, we're going to start with uh, public access. And what we're going to do tonight is we're going to take Danielle Kane first because she has to be, in other words, she has to, to go pick her son up. Meeting 
and make it more of a social, inviting event for people who may have never been to a town meeting before um, by having an opportunity for some of these organizations that are looking for volunteers to come um, and talk about their organization, provide opportunities um, for people to sign up to be on their mailing list or to um, join a committee. Um, and so we thought having the hour, hour and a half before town meeting as sort of a social time where people can congregate and learn more about these organizations, maybe have some refreshments, might bring more people into town meeting um, as well as fill some seats. Where would, excuse me, friend, where would yep. you plan on having this little social that you're talking about? Probably, um, probably outside the cafeteria. Yeah. It would have to be. Yeah, think there's enough awesome. room out there because right. we really can't have you in, you know, the meeting room because right. I could get too congested with people, you know, coming in yeah, for, the, for the, uh, and if it's a nice day, you could even be outside to yeah, do this absolutely. too. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I know the, um, the Boy Scouts are looking for an opportunity to unveil their trails behind the elementary school. So, you know, if you think that this is too much for one day, I understand well, that we can, yeah. Well, you, know, you can finish, but it's something I, we should take into consideration okay. without deciding on it this evening. Sure, okay. Okay. Um, and so, and then the last idea was um, rolled into those two to have an ongoing campaign. We would try to encourage people to take a, a pledge to commit to um, was maybe 10 hours of community service or give a donation of $25 over the coming year. So we just have more people who are committed to do something for their town, not a huge investment to something, whether it's a cleanup day or whether it's joining a committee um, or whether it's, you know, <coughs> making a donation to TED or something like that. Um, um, and then, you know, we could, we wouldn't keep track of people and their pledges mm -hmm. per se, but we could reach out and just give them reminders that, hey, you know, the year is half over, have you done your service, or something like that. Um, just a way to give people pride in mm -hmm. taking part in the community and becoming more involved. Have you talked to um, any of the, the Republican Town Committee? I would love to include because the Republican Town Committee. Because they should. I mean, I yes, think absolutely. if you're going to do it, it should absolutely. be open line to the Republican right. Committee. And if we, any other political yes, organization here in the, in the community, just shouldn't be the Democrats to, to, uh, because everybody should have an equal fair share in this. I agree. I totally agree. And I would welcome, you know, partners to, oh, to work on this get, with us. You should um, probably get in touch. I know the Stephen Comtois yeah. is the chairman sure. of the uh, Republican Town Committee, so you should probably get in touch with him also to I, have a joint effort. Right, right. We felt, we felt that we needed to start with the selectmen mm -hmm. to see if we yeah. had your support for this and whether we we're going to proceed with the fair or not. And if not, you know, we would look at other ways to continue um, the campaign and you know with a longer timeline. If we do the fair at town meeting, then we have a pretty short timeline to get this done. Yeah. Um, so, so that's why I, we and wanted to come to you first before we okay. engage too and, many um, and, partners. And sorry to interrupt. Yep. And as I understand it, none of this would actually have any, in essence, branding politically because it's all local, it's all municipal. Oh no, I understand and, that. And, right, yeah. But I think that if there's other political organizations oh, yeah. here in town, they should be involved too, not just uh, one party. I didn't say that it should Well, that's how I understood what you just said. So no, a, a job fair at town meeting will right. truly allow us to promote what, what open positions we have mm -hmm. and, and get people interested and excited and that's, that for that, that's terrific. But we'll just take it, I think, under discussion and we'll discuss yeah, some more I, about well, it. I'm, I'm all ga game for a job fair to test the water, so that's right. my position. So we, we At this time, it. I'm not prepared. Okay. Nope. No so I, I, would, I would just ask, Madam Chair, um, that, you know, if we are going to do something for town meeting, we would need to get a letter and a form out to um, all the town committees to see if they would be interested in participating. And so I don't want to delay it too oh, much. No, we but won't. I, okay. Okay. Well, thank you for coming in this evening. Thank you. Thank you. So do you think that's something we should roll to the next agenda and perhaps yep. discuss yep. it there? Yeah. Karen, we'll put it on the next agenda. Yeah. Okay. We'll take the next. Do we have some more public access here this evening? Jen, do you want to come up? Yes.
So, um, my name is Jennifer Aver. I've been a resident of Brookfield for more than 34 years. Um, I served in the Air Force. Um, my family has been really big into Brookfield sports and everything else. Um, I know you guys have been CC'd on some emails going back and forth between the rec committee. Um, so what it comes down to is them refusing my daughter to play in Brookfield. Um, Quaybaugh Little League voted unanimously twice to allow her to play coach pitch softball in Brookfield. Mm -hmm. The rec committee in Brookfield is denying her that right. They're telling her that she needs to go to West Brookfield to play. I was reading, Jen, about how this paper needs everyone, by the way, this what? packet's in there. That she, was, that she was too young to play? So this is what they were telling you? No, no. The first email I got said that she's six and in kindergarten. Then it was both coach pitch teams are fall. Now each team has seven girls on it. The boys have 12 kids on one team. Mm -hmm. So a full seven is not a full team. I've played softball since I was eight years old. Um, I think about the entirety of there's three stacks. Do you have three of them? Okay, no, that's mine. I'm sorry. Yeah, we each have, yeah, have a pack. Okay. Now, where they get safety issue, I don't know. They're not medical professionals. They have no basis on determining what a safety issue in softball is. If anything, it's a safety issue keeping these six-year-olds that have played t-ball for two years, keeping them down in t-ball. I've seen my daughter hit. I went to my son, who's five years old, his t-ball practice last night, and they can barely throw the ball. They can barely hit the ball. She can nail the ball with somebody pitching to her. She can throw the ball accurately. She's not out there, you know, um, picking daisies and not paying attention. She's paying attention to the ball, to, to where yeah. the ball is. Um, so if anything, it's a safety issue keeping her down in the ball. Yeah. Um, she's a smart girl. They and now for years before this, they've always allowed six-year-olds to play on coach pitch softball. I have. I have 10 girls alone, and most of them are rec committee children who have played on coach pitch softball and not forced to stay down. So their safety, like Quaybaugh Little League already determined it was not a safety issue. She can play up with the, you know, with the, the seven and eight year olds, keeping her down in t-ball with the five and six year olds, I mean the four and five year olds, that's a huge age gap for them. Mm -hmm. um, so that's more of a safety issue in my eyes. So I'm asking that you guys overrule them and allow her to play in the town that she lives in and she's grown, grown up in. Well, things like this, it's kind of, we really usually, Jen, don't get involved with trying to overrule the recreation committee. You know, the Sockmen don't get involved with that. Well, and it also puts us at risk yeah, when you do something yeah, like when that. When we do that, it's a risk that everybody can come to us and say, oh, well, my child should be playing here, my child should be playing there, and, you know, we're overruling the rec commission, and I don't think they'd be too happy. I can give you an example of what happened to my grandson <coughs> last year. He, he played when he was um, four and five, he played in a league, soccer league in East Brookfield for two years, and then he was in first grade last year fall and he was six and a half and he he was the only one on the team that had ever actually played soccer before so you know my son along that mm -hmm. so he tried to get him moved up to the next age bracket and they said no they couldn't let him because of a safety issue this is what they told him so we went through the same thing last year with him right but i, I believe it's a safety issue keeping her down yeah. in team and, and Quaybaugh Little League, who, is, who governs over Brookfield Recreation, mm -hmm. has already determined it's not a safety issue. She can move up mm -hmm. to coach pitch. But so now Brookfield is saying, well, she can move up to coach pitch. She's just not playing in Brookfield. And now every team that they're going to play is going to have five and six-year-olds on it. Brookfield is going to have six, uh, seven and eight-year-olds. So... Mr. Snyder, would you like to add something to this conversation? Yeah, just, yes, I would. Um, as difficult as this conversation yeah, is, is. Uh, I spent four years as a player agent, two years as the president of the league. Um, these kinds of things happen um, fairly, or to me anyway, in that situation happened to me quite routinely. And so with, with this, where, where I see, again, we don't have, I don't 
believe we have rec represented this evening. So it's one, it would be unfair for us to make any decisions without them present uh, to change this to prior decisions. What it also does for us is it puts us in a very awkward position because as I understand it, that uh, uh, was, uh, Brookfield has allowed or is recommending T-ball for your daughter. That essentially by the positioning of where she's positioned on the team. Given, uh, and what I also understand is that there was a waiver offered to allow her to play in the, in the West Brookfield, on a West Brookfield team. By us making a decision to, in fact, allow her uh, to move up within East Brookfield or overruling the rec committee, should anything happen, we would be at risk. The, set, the second piece, what it, does, what it does for you is it also puts you at risk because with the idea of signing the waiver you, to play on that team, understanding that you're not interested to play in, in West Brookfield, but if you were to play up in West Brookfield, that also puts you at risk. And so I, I just, again, I find this a very difficult situation. I find that it would be impossible for this board to make a decision to overrule Rep, at least at, at this juncture anyway. So it's just, again, I'm, I'm sorry for the situation, but it, uh, I think uh, we have to go by what the, what the decisions were. Yeah, I think one of the challenges is they're closer to it. It's not something that we're looking at on a regular basis. I don't know if part of it is also just on, on balancing the teams. There could be a lot of other factors that aren't necessarily represented in the traffic we see. So. Again, it's nothing we can make no, a decision on. It's for. nothing we can really make a decision on tonight. Maybe if we had, you know, a member of the rep commission here to represent the rep, maybe we could have talked more about this. So he yeah, wasn't it, it's a, to come. He was? Yes, he said he would have come. That's why he passed along oh, this package. Oh, this is why he passed along the whole packet, because he wouldn't okay. come. So this is something we really, want, you know, we're sorry we can't get involved with it, but I mean, it would be going over their heads. Well, and again, it would put this board at yeah, risk. It would put us at risk too, going over, you know, going even, over their heads. Even saying. though Quaybot Little League says that, even the, even the rules of Little League say that five and six year olds can play softball. May play. May Yeah. May play. So again, yeah. you, you would hope that the taking the best interest of the child that they have. Can, can we recommend to them that they maybe do a skills night where they can see? Well, I well, think it's a safety issue keeping well, her at team Quite honestly, I, I think it would, would be, speaking of committees that need people on mm -hmm. committee, that committee is too short. Yeah. And that, that would be a decision for the committee to make. Can we make a mention also? I'm sorry, my name is Christine Hurley. I'm her mother. And I've been very involved in this town. Well, baseball, Little League, um, in that same age group, they have 12 boys on the coach pitch team. And one of those boys had one year of D-ball, and he's six years old. And he's in kindergarten. It's, it's not fair. It's not fair. Gender but as soon as I brought that up, they brought that little boy down. They knew that he was six years old. They're claiming that they didn't. OK. Mm -hmm. But they, his mother was told at sign-ups, nope, he's six, he's played a year of T-ball, he can move up, absolutely. So they allowed it. He even went to practice. He even went to one practice. And then as soon as they saw that, in my email, they moved him down. It's just not fair that what they're doing to this poor little girl who's already had two years of T-ball, and they're saying that it's a safety issue, but yet they're saying it's okay for her to play in another town. This is her town. We pay taxes in this town. Uh, she goes to school with these kid, these girls, and she wants to play. And their 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 thing is that she's only five, and she's I mean she's six, and she's in kindergarten. I don't care. She's six. She's played two years. This will give her three years of default. And she's she's gonna end up hurting the little uh, the little t-ball kids. And I'm sorry. Um, I guess the thing to do is um, you guys um, appoint the, the recreation committee. Mm -hmm. And. Um, what, what are you here for? You know, if we can't come to you, if there's problems with the recreation committee. I think they're unbiased. There's, uh, there's I don't know why they yeah, don't their own children to play. We can but show pictures. When it, comes, when it comes to other kids, they're, they're not allowing them. All these years they've been playing. All these the kindergartners have been playing coach pitch. All of a sudden, this year, they're not allowing my granddaughter to play. That's not fair. 
And but so, yet, it's okay for her to go play in Westbrook. Yeah. Without your daughter, and, and I don't know because I have I've I've seen this traffic and I've seen some of the email traffic that most of it is what is attached here. Um, <clears throat> without your daughter, is there balanced um, teams within the T-ball or within? Like, do they have adequate kids from a standpoint of from what I saw last field night, the teams? The only six-year-olds last night have never played T-ball on my, on my team because I'm coaching my son's team. He's five. Um, so on our team, there's one six-year-old girl, and she's never played before. I don't know about the rest of the... And if she was to leave T-ball, the numbers are still fine. And she's not going to overcrowd the... First, it was numbers. They were saying there was too many kids. This is the first I've heard of a safety issue. I have the emails that I've received from Carrie on the rec committee and Jen. There are actually two full CP teams. But then three weeks ago, a little girl was invited to, to join and play. So if you're considering, and, and Carrie told me personally that they can't deny kids the right to play, even if they sign up after the season started. And you want to engage. Mm -hmm. And how do you call seven, you know, and a few weeks ago there was seven and six on, a t you know, on two different teams. A seven, six, but yet the boys have 12 on one team. What, you know, it's not an overcrowding. You know what in baseball, I mean, I'm sure you know how many kids yeah. you can put on a field. Yes, it's nice to keep the numbers low in that age group, you know. Yep. All doesn't right. go up the yeah. outfield. But what's one more kid? Well, you know, it's... <clears throat> Yeah, but the unfortunate thing is we're, we're being asked to overrule the decision of that committee without them present. And um, with that, that puts this board in the town at risk. As difficult as that decision is or that, that statement is, it's what it is. And it's unfortunate. It is unfortunate. Yeah. Especially they, Brookfield could lose their charter with Little League because they're going against what Quaybog Valley, you know. Well, unanimously voted it looks like that they voted on both issues both that she could move up but also to make room available within the league just it wasn't in the town correct yeah that's actually what Brookfield wanted to complain about that first um, the first one from Ashley Sturgis it's not a numbers problem that's what I don't understand even if there was these are little kids it's, you know it's, so what's so my understanding is the fundamental difference between tee ball and coach pitch is just that on one it's on the tee and on the other the coach right. pitches mm -hmm. but yeah and but it's it, still like there's no strikeouts yeah. there's you're trying not to. Yeah. What, what, you, what you're trying to do over that period of time is move them from tees to, to, to pitch, pitch. Yeah. and and making sure that again everybody's safe and playing and enjoying right. and getting together the camaraderie because you really want to grow your numbers right. Mm -hmm. So and this would actually move her away from the kids who she's going to school with because of her age. But it would put her on the same skin level as other kids. Okay. It's just we can't. We can't. We can't. We can't make that decision. We can't. We'd have to. Because it puts to, the town at risk. If we could yeah. get to, if we could get together with um, the rep and talk with them, you know, it's really their decision to make. Well, and and again, I would, I, I would refer it back to yeah, the rec committee. Yeah, for back to the rec committee. We wish we could help, but you know we can't. We we can't put ourselves at risk, what Mr. Snyder. Well, it's said. it's not us. It's, it's the town. It's the town. Well, when when it comes time, seeing we're not going to really get anywhere. Um, how would it be in the future when we put something together and we come to you folks? Would you, would you give us your blessing when we pull softball away from Quaybog Little League or, or Brookfield Little League? I wanna, I'm thinking that's our next step because our, our, our girls in this town has not been going very far with the league that they've been in. So are you chartered Little League? We are. Yes, well, kind of, even though Quaybog Little League does not want to pay for our um, patches. Mm -hmm. When you're Little League and Charter, you have to wear Little League patches. No, so, patch on hires. Oh, it's patch on hires. Oh, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. But no, I would pull them, years ago, this is what happened, it was the same way. When we go off to junior high, we don't play Little League-based softball. 
we play either ASA, NSA, or it's, it's now um, another name. Uh, and it's, the rules are totally different. The pitching is different, the stealing, everything, a lot of stuff is different. So I pulled the girls away from Little League softball, and we joined the ASA. Okay. Got a Marine Sherman, out of our Roman, yeah. and the whole thing, yeah. And um, we became very successful. You know, the girls were making the school teams. Right. I feel girls are not making the school teams. They haven't, they, you know, you're lucky if there's one, but regardless. You met the junior high and high school level? Yeah. There's one girl that's made it, I think, this year. So there's two pieces to this. Yeah. The, the first piece is one, there are two open slots on the rec committee, as I understand it. The, those slots need to be filled. The, the, the next piece is that this board would, in fact, entertain through the rec committee a, a change in organization if it's going to promote the improvement of the league or leagues. Mm -hmm. so and, if, and if there are two open slots, you said on the rec commission, maybe you, the both of you should get in How many slots are on there? How many do you seven. is on there nowadays? Seven. There's seven? So there's right. five members right now? There was this, it's a nine member. No, I'm sorry, nine. nine. So if they, I get seven so if they have a couple nine. of slots open, I advise that the both of you put in that you'd like to be appointed to the rec commission. Um, I do also, I would also be interested just personally in the list of, uh, of kids that have been moved up historically. Okay. If you know that or have mm -hmm. that. Because um, I'd, I'd kind of like to understand the history a little bit better. Well, another thing is... That's something I've been involved in where I have, don't have any kids in the school system. I just want to make, make, mention in public, too, that people are being denied coaching spots in this town as well. You know, people put their paperwork in, then they say it's been missing or whatever, you put it back in. Um, you need to be quarried. You have, you know, it's a good, yep. good yep. amount of paperwork. Sure. I put mine in, and I'm not coaching. You know, I heard they needed coaches on T-ball. You know, I asked to do a lot of different things. I know a few others. I know a, a coach from Tantasqua asked to, you know, put her paperwork in. She, she's a very valuable person to this town, um, but she's not allowed. I would recommend you join the board. I can't, because I don't live in this town. I think that we do have... I own property in this town, I pay taxes. But I'm pretty sure we do have a member that lives in North Brookfield. You can be a... If it's appointed, you can't... Okay. You don't have oh. to... Oh! I'm pretty that sure. That was told different then. Okay. I don't know if he's still on it, but he was. There was a member from North Brookfield who had lived here in... He lived here in Brookfield and he moved and he was appointed, so you should probably check in. I'll have to check because I, I would... Um, um, what was I going to say? Because if it doesn't go the way, even if you know we're outvoted on the recreation committee, we're going to take these girls somewhere else. And I would love the blessing from this town. People ready? Okay. Just did it. You know, the, some of the other towns are doing the same thing. Okay. So. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any more public access? Uh, they're on the regular agenda, too, David. Yeah, I know. This, this, won't is, a take too, this, this is a different subject. This won't take too long because we've got quite a bit well, on tonight. You didn't limit anybody else tonight, so I don't think you should limit me. I mean, I'm but you are on just a resident in town, so don't limit me if you don't limit anyone else. And that's that's going to be my little topic here is um, we bring it to, to you, to this board, about our First Amendment freedom of speech when when someone comes up here me or anyone else and I speak on things that you don't want to hear you don't want to hear it you don't like what I say you can you, and it offends you that's freedom of speech we can't limit that and you try to do that a lot to me when I come up here okay I'm a resident and I'm a citizen in this town a citizen of the United States and when I come up here sometimes I'm making suggestions Sometimes I'm criticizing you. Sometimes I'm paying you a compliment. But when I come up here, I don't want you to limit me and say, you know, you can't say that. In the last beginning of April, I spoke about some of our town employees. We had a criminal activity going on. I didn't mention names, but it was just a discussion. And you tried to limit, you tried to limit that to me. Oh, absolutely, and I'm going to, I am going to interrupt for just a second. Okay, well, and, just and, and, and I'm going to say, and let, let me just address that, that point right now. No, let me so speak. Open. I'm speaking right now. This is my time, okay? 
You always got to say something when I'm in the middle of speaking. So when I talk about the generics, Dave. Public, when I'm up here, public access, and I'm not, I'm not. You can, I don't want voices raised or I'll right. have well, Who's you raising their voice? You. No, I'm not. Well, I'm trying to over talk you three. And it's my time to talk. So anyway, getting back to my basis is when I'm up here, I don't want you to limit me to my time. You didn't limit anyone else tonight. If I have something to say and you're not agreeable with it, just listen, take it under advisement, and we'll go on with it like that. But I don't want to be I don't want to be called out and say, oh, we can't talk about that. That's offense, yes, offensive. You, you do come up sometimes, and some of your conversations are very offensive to others, and they and they know who you're talking about. That's freedom that, of speech. That, 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 That's freedom of speech. Okay. That's our First Amendment. As long as we're not swearing, getting loud, throwing chairs, jumping up and down. That's freedom of speech. You may not want to hear it, but when I don't want to see it get lost in our town. Okay, that's my point. So Madam please, yes. please just listen when I when I come up here, yeah. take it under advisement, but don't try to cut me down when I'm making a point. Are you done? Go ahead. That's I'm listening. Madam Chairman, I've heard the word criminal a couple of weeks ago. I've heard the word, mm -hmm. word well. criminal again this evening. Mm -hmm. I think it's totally inappropriate. We asked that Mr. Holcraft meet with the police chief to determine whether or not there was criminal activity reported in this town, that he had any facts related to criminal activity in this town. He provided no facts to the police chief with respect to criminal activity in the town. And further, later on in the agenda, we're going to hear a little bit more about it, I'm sure. But as far as the, we cut Mr. Holcraft off at that time because he was suggesting criminal activity in the town of Brookfield, he was referred to the police chief to explain to him, the chief that criminal activity. There is no indication of criminal activity by the, the employees in this town. And, and Madam Chair, may I just add on to that is that it's not a restriction of free speech to adhere to open meeting law, which restricts us from discussing anything that's related to necessarily the character of the employees in the town without them being given an opportunity to know what the information is and for that to to allow them to address it if they choose in executive session. So I, I think the primary objection there was to uh, Mr. Snyder's point, if it's criminal, it goes to the police chief. Yeah. If, it's, if it's not crossing the threshold of criminal, but related mm -hmm. to the character of, of somebody who works mm -hmm. for the town, it's not an appropriate topic for open meeting. We've told him this before. Right. It's open meeting. No one was accused of criminal activity. You guys said I was accusing you of criminal activity. If you remember that, and you said that to me on the telephone to one day. So if I want to say that, I can say that. That's that's freedom of speech. I didn't name names, departments, or anything. And talk, going to the police chief is a little premature. And I spoke to him about it too. We haven't even discussed the situation at hand with town employees. That's a perfect example. If I appear at a public forum. I can say that. I can say well, I'm, not, I'm not accusing anyone, and I'm not slandering anyone. I'm talking in general, and that's what we're talking about our town and our problems. Then I have that right to say that here in a public forum. That's freedom of speech, and this is what I'm trying to get but through to people. But you can't accuse us though of criminal acts. I did not goes, accuse anyone. Yes, you did. No, you I did not. Take. You accused us of criminal activity no. going on in this town. And that's another and thing. Allowing it. They haven't put that. They haven't put that meeting on TV, and I'm wondering why. So play that, play that back, and then you can listen to what I said. Well, we listened to it on YouTube. Okay. Well, I'll have to listen to it again myself. But that's not what I said. And you just said it. I thought we were talking about the some employees, not you three. All right. So I made my point. I'll be back up when we get on the agenda. All right. We are on the agenda now. <clears throat> no. It's, oh, we were gonna. The advisory. We're, we're there. gonna pass over the advisory board. We're going to like yeah. <clears throat> we're gonna do, we, we're gonna do the other items next. Yeah. We'll okay, so Mr. Holcraft, you're on next. Who are you doing, number three or two? You're going to do number three, and then you're on number four, both of them. All right, so you're skipping one and two? <clears throat> no. We already had the volunteer. We had that discussion oh, with Miss okay. Kane, right. and right. then the joint meeting with the advisory board is going to be held. We're putting that at the end. Okay. 
Okay. So may I speak? Yes. Okay. We seem to have a, a very sticky situation in our town that nobody wants to discuss, and I will discuss it, which I should not be discussing. It should be you three that are being discussing it. Um, employee, we have a lot of employees, not all of them, but some of them, are not working their hours in this town, and they're still getting paid. They're not working their, they're not working the hours they're supposed to be working. They're not working their posted hours. I don't care if they're elected, salary, or hourly. They're not working their hours, and they're still getting paid. How do I know this? Because there's a few citizens in town we've been watching who's coming, who's going, and some people are coming in checking, and these people are not getting, are not here working. So you don't want to be, you don't want to make to be accountable to the employees. That would be, that's your job, Linda. <clears throat> they are finish. filling out, Dave, they are filling out their time sheets yes. and, with these hours in their signing to them, and they're signing that yes. these are the hours that they have worked. Yeah, no, I, I don't agree with that. Because I'm watching the warrants and these people. How are you watching the warrants? They're, they're, they're right there. It's a public information, Linda. I know you're trying to keep everything under wraps now. What warrants are you coming in and you're looking at? The ledgers, the warrants, public information, Linda. So let's not get let's not get off onto that track. Bottom line is what I just said is it's common knowledge of what's going on in here. And that's, did the treasurer quit this week or walk out? We can't say anything. Okay. Well, that was that whole bullet we had two, three weeks in this town hall is related to people not doing their jobs. They're not coming in, they're not working their hours, and they're getting paid. And, if, and I say they're falsifying their timesheets. And now that's criminal. Oh, well, that's a felony. That's a felony. And it's, and it's happening in this town. And we have no record of anyone doing this, no, so we therefore we can no, take no every, action. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's all under, undercurrent and nobody wants to talk about it. Well, I'm talking about it because I'm a taxpayer. In fact, Dave, I look through those payroll sheets very carefully every week. And every I'm sure week, the yeah. I always do. You can ask. Yeah. And I look, and if I see, feel that somebody hasn't worked their appropriate hours or something, I always look at to that department yeah, and I'll ask well. them a question. Okay. Well, I'm going to say it again. You have certain town employees in here. They're falsifying their time sheets, and this has been going on for a long time. And everybody in this town hall knows what's going on. And then not, it's not just in the town hall. It's other departments, too. And nobody wants to get time clocks in this town, and that's one of the reasons. And you and, and you three, got a great idea. And you three don't want to make be accountable for what's going on. Mr. Hillcraft, that's an initiative petition. Go find your 11 friends and have them sign it. No. Time time no, I, don't, I don't have to do it. This is, this is what I mean when I come up here to you three. You three are governing the town. You, you, should, you should be looking into this and you should be making people accountable for what's going on in our town. Our finances in this town are so screwed up. We're two years behind. We're going to have a uh, meeting. Two years? We're about four years to get it straight. Yeah, well, we should work on what's current right now so we can get have our town you meeting. Can't, you can't we work. get our free cash certified. <laughs> Madam Chair, the town we've had our finances have been so screwed but, up. But We're you two can't, years Dave, behind you Linda. can't, you can't hop up and straighten out one year without going back to the previous I'm talking years. about the last two years. But that doesn't have anything to do with it. It's, we've had some problems for about four years now. You have four to solve years. the problems back then before we can. We just can't go into say um, 2018 and solve those problems and go on. You have to settle the problems from before. Linda, I was on the finance board. I know, I know what's going on, and I'm talking about the last two years now. We're trying to get free cash certified. And we're gonna have a, when was when's our when's our town meeting gonna be? July? Maybe August? September maybe? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. work is not getting done. Madam Chairman, yes. we have nothing to work with. No. We don't have uh, a report of employees that have inappropriate no. signed. I know. We, we have indications from a citizen that, that people aren't working their hours, yet it's, mm -hmm. it's all insinuation. It's nothing. We have no facts. I'm bringing, I'm, so, this is the beginning you, process, is what you, I'm trying to tell you. And once again, can Clarence, you, you want to look the other way. You, have you seen these payroll sheets? Can you prove to us and bring them in here? And tell us if these people aren't working these appropriate hours that they're supposed to be working? I'm, I could, yes, I could do that in some, some cases, yes. When I was so on the finance board. All right, well, so the next right, time but, this you know what, I don't want to hear you know when you're on the finance board. Yeah, but you know what, Linda and Clarence? You three are supposed to be accountable. Make these people accountable to what's going on. And you don't do it. 
I can't act on something I don't have. Yeah. I see. Okay. Well, well, I'm bringing, I'm bringing it's it's nothing here, forward. David. You you do, yeah. you don't provide names. I offered you an initiative petition where you can direct this board to do something if the town agrees, to get and you've refused that. To get so I, we have nothing. Well, it's time to move on. on. Yeah. yeah, it's time I, to move on. So this is this is what happens here every time we have a problem here, Clarence. You look the other way. Absolutely, that's correct. You're not. You, you haven't. You don't want to solve problems. In town. You're dividing our town, and you're causing <laughs> more problems. That's ridiculous. Oh, right. All right. That, that's, I, that's, 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 that's what they, the this, this topic is. I know. You don't want. It's, it's, it's too much truth, and you don't want to hear it. It's ended. Let's go on to your next one. What, what's your next one? Okay. What, what, what do you think? I'm not going to let. That's not going to slide. What we just discussed. Here's one. What's our What's our uh, policy on town vehicles? Okay. I will give you a copy. We have one here for you. And it's a, that's him. So what are we spending time on this for? Well, you I'll want, get to that in a minute, Clarence. He wants Just to be know patient. what the town policy Be patient, Clarence. I know you'll look the other way anyway. We don't need the comments, David. No, I, I have that right. I'm speaking right now. It almost seems as though we're in, you know, I, you make out that I'm like the principal in the school and you're the other student. We have to correct you for everything you do. No, I don't think so. You just, it's, I, I, speak, I speak it the way it is. You're not used to that. In your world. <coughs> Thank you. I was In your world. It really loud. Yeah, that's the problem with that town. It's almost like a comedy show. Right? I don't know how we've survived so, I don't know how we've survived so many years. I know. Oh. Speaking of that, because he's still reading, yeah. uh, we are going to celebrate the 300th town meeting on December 18th. We need to figure out how to do that. Okay. Okay. We'll have to get together and we'll discuss that in the meeting. Yeah, we need to get that on the agenda. Okay. Karen? I'm writing it down. Okay, Karen's writing it down. This is, this is the policy? This was a policy that was made in August 20th. 2002. Okay, so can, and there are, this is the only policy that we have. All right, so before I before I get get to the crunch of this, what? So if if someone has a town vehicle in this town, one of these streets, can they they can take it and go out of town anywhere they want, shopping for their own persons, go anywhere they want, all hours no, of the day? No, no, it tells you it tells you right here what okay. they can. They're allowed to take these vehicles home, and, and they can take it out of out of the uh, town if they are going out on town business. Right, they I agree. I town. agree with that 100. percent But what, how how much out of town? When their own personal shopping going into other towns all the hours of the night when there's not no meetings going on? So, Madam Chairman, mm -hmm. so cut this one yeah. off as well. That if there's a report of a vehicle leaving town that is reported to us, we can take an action. Yeah. Right. Hearsay we, is hearsay. Yeah. Hearsay if you, time. Yeah, if you can give us something in Some writing, sort of if, if somebody's keeping a record, say if somebody's using the vehicle to go do their grocery shopping, and if they were caught there, record it, the date and the time. Okay. This is what you have to do. We want to see something. Since everybody carries a, a camera in their pocket yeah. these days, I yeah. don't think our, that that would be yeah, make it very difficult. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the, okay, so this policy here doesn't really doesn't really hit on it. It just it, it, they're supposed to use the vehicle for this town is, business, this town is, meetings, this and is back the and forth. This is the policy. Okay. He he's, he asked for policy. He has a policy. Yep. He has no information no, for us. No information. I'd say this agenda topic is done. Well, done. If you, I asked what the policy was. I have this now. You have no. it now. Okay. So uh, when I get more, then I will be back with you because okay. we have a certain vehicle. Well, we expect it. Yes, we have a certain vehicle that goes all over different towns at all hours of the night. So I would hope. And this is what this is what I wanted to find out first before I go further. Well, we, we can't wait yeah. till you explain okay. to us. Who well, this I know, so, you can, is. so you can do nothing, Clarence. Anyway, you do nothing. You're just a figure. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Okay. Next on our agenda is Chief Blanchard. He has some police appointments. Good evening. Our appointment slips. I mean, yeah, I saw them. Okay. There it is. I'd like to uh, bring forward uh, neither of these 
and gentlemen and get to my um, one's working one had a prior commitment. But uh, Dan Driscoll mm -hmm. and uh, Joel Wilson to the appointment of uh, reserve police officer with the town of Brookfield. Uh, Joel had worked as a reserve officer uh, probably resigning about two years ago to concentrate on his school. Yeah, he wishes exactly. to come back, rejoin mm -hmm. the police department. Mm -hmm. um, he's currently a sergeant at the Worcester County House of Corrections. Okay. Um, he's in the special services unit at the House of Corrections, which does investigations um, inside and outside of the jail. Um, he is also a member of the uh, SEMLAC SWAT team, which is a Central Massachusetts Law Enforcement uh, Council um, SWAT team. So he goes out and he serves high risk warrants with other uh, members of the Worcester County SWAT team. Um, Dan, I'm sure you guys all know Dan. Dan um, has worked on the ambulance crew since probably 2008, on the fire department since 2009. Um, and he's just recently graduated the uh, Reserve and Dominion Academy and is like, we like to get his foot into law enforcement as well. And he's a North Brookfield resident. He's committed a lot of time to this town. Um, I believe he's on the highway department as well right now. Um, so I'd like to bring forward both those names for consideration for appointment. It'll be starting out with $16 an hour. Okay, do I have a motion? You have a motion to that effect. Second. Any discussion on this? All, on, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And thank, then, you. thank you, Mike. And then maybe you can uh, get them both up to a meeting so that we can meet them. Here. Sure, absolutely. How does that uh, How does that position us overall from the standpoint of your reserve officer? You're going to ask, and I was trying to think of how many <laughs> we can I think it brings us up to nine or ten, possibly. Okay. Um, and then uh, there's a few other people. Um, the uh, Central Mass Chiefs of the Police Association Academy, Intermittent Reserve Academy, just graduated today. So there's going to be a couple other people that I'm entertaining on putting on. But I don't want to put on too many at a time to train. I just don't think right. we'll do it. It won't be fair to anybody. No, you know? and so, we don't want to burn out your training officers. Right, no. right. And I think the, the officer getting trained might not get the best training either if there's so many people. So, right. But I will probably be bringing. So I'd like to keep it on, you know, plus 10, you know, a little bit right. more than 10, you know, so we're getting there, so. Okay. I think that's all I have, that's unless it. you guys have anything. Okay. Nope. Nope. No, keep going. Mike. Keep going. Thank all right. you. I appreciate oh, it. One thing, uh, the rate, it's not, it's a practice track, supposedly, yeah. down on Quay, 5 Quaybog, mm -hmm. and the traffic is heavily increased on the weekends. It's. It's unbelievable down there. It's okay. one car after another. They're coming in from all different states. So I was wondering maybe we should, could get you know more offices down there Absolutely. patrolling. Absolutely. Uh, is there a time frame when they're coming and going? Is it just all well, hours? They're day? coming. We, uh, we, we followed vehicles going in one morning at 8 o'clock in the morning, and they're not supposed to be starting till uh, 10 down there. And they're down there till dusk and even later. So, I mean, there's just so much traffic out there. Okay. No, if, I, if you I can could get down, and then they're also, they throw out their trash all over the place and everything. You never even know. I'm going to have to issue. I know you can't do <laughs> that. We, we're not, we will certainly, yeah. we'll certainly monitor, but yeah. I mean, that seems to be but if you issue could, but if you could, <laughs> everywhere in town. Yeah. But if you could get the offices down there, you know, do yeah. some duty on the street, I appreciate that Absolutely. very much. Okay. Be a problem. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of that, back to uh, when we were doing the cleanup the other day, uh, I was at White's Landing, in Quay mm -hmm. Bar to White's Landing, and uh, the environmental uh, police went by Mike when we were picking up trash, mm -hmm. and he went. And the next thing I know is the the sound level was eliminated. So I'm wondering if they weren't down there checking. Is it, could I don't you, know. Could you make a call and just see what they found if they found something? Because then he drove back by, and then all of a sudden the noise was back. Mm -hmm. Um, would you also do me do me a favor? And Shrewsbury is looking at a AL, um, the uh, ISO certified sound test for a local ordinance. Would you reach out to them and find out um, how, what their plans are for execution and enforcement? Sure. What, what do they What do they use it for? It uh, they're I I am not certain what pro, what drove them <coughs> to go ahead and and look at instituting it, but it's a it's a test that's similar but a little more rigorous than the one that's currently used under Mass General Law. Do you know what department's using that? Or is I, know, I, know, I, know, I know Shrewsbury is, is looking, I know the town's looking at adopting it. Okay. 
I was going to try to reach out to their city council. I think they were city council versus selectmen. Yeah. I'm not certain. I don't know. No, they have town manager. They are town manager. Yeah. All right. I can reach out to the town manager. Yeah. Go from there. That'd be great. Yeah. Good. All right, Mike. Thank you for All coming right. in. Have a good night. Okay. Thank you. Too. you.